Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. Labor loves that it was one of the very, their very own who delivered the Stolen Generations apology. Kevin Rudd did the hard sell on the apology, telling Australians it was necessary for us to move forward together as a nation. However, Anthony Albanese has decided to turn us backward as two separate nations divided by race. That's the real end game. That's ultimately where the racist voice to parliament will take us. Labor is committed to implementing the Uluru Statement in full, so the voice is only the first step. The next step is truth-telling, but Labor can't bring itself to tell the truth about its plans for the voice. Labor can't admit the truth that the elitist, out of touch, Aboriginal industry, which concocted the Uluru Statement, has for decades now been responsible for the failure to close the gaps. Labor won't admit the truth that out of uncounted billions of dollars the Aboriginal industry has stolen from taxpayers has failed to help Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people living in the violence, plague, economic and social dead ends we call remote communities. The truth is this industry is made up of thousands of corrupt and dysfunctional Aboriginal corporations and land councils. The truth is these organisations are only interested in lining their own pockets and using their power to punch down on the truly disadvantaged Aborigines they despise and the few good people who are really trying to help them. The truth is that like 80% of Aborigines, this industry's leaders don't live in remote Aboriginal communities and they're not remotely disadvantaged. They've done very well for themselves, better than most of us. The truth is these leaders are the very same failures and frauds now eagerly looking forward to well-paid, constitutionally protected jobs with the racist voice to parliament. The truth is this mob doesn't even have the discipline to follow the Prime Minister's script to downplay the powers and scope of the voice. They started that way, but their naked greed for race-based constitutional power has been on full display recently. What an embarrassment for the Prime Minister. Megan Davis last week made it very clear that of course the voice will have tremendous power. This was always the true intention. She's effectively admitted that what constitutional experts have been saying for some time now, that the courts will play a significant role in determining the powers of the voice. That's right, this woman, appointed by the Prime Minister to advise him on the voice, anticipates challenges in the High Court over the voice's powers. She has directly, directly contradicted the Prime Minister, who has been telling us only Parliament will do it. The truth is Parliament will be repeatedly held hostage in a series of constitutional crises while the unelected High Court extends the voice's powers. The Prime Minister and his mob of voice cheerleaders also keep repeating the lie, the voice is necessary to close the gaps. The truth is that a voice filled with the same frauds who have failed Aborigines and remote communities for decades will close nothing. The truth is these frauds have a vested interest in keeping those gaps as wide as the Grand Canyon, otherwise they won't have the excuses they need to keep demanding more and more power and money. And the truth is Anthony Albanese will just roll over and let it all happen. Another truth is that every parliament to come will be paralysed for months while activists demand to expand the powers of the voice and take each parliament to the High Court if those demands aren't met. So much for moving forward together. The truth is the voice is a racist black nationalist vehicle for chaos, lies and an Australia constantly in conflict. Australians must reject this racist voice that will take us backwards more than 50 years. We must prioritise helping those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in real disadvantage in neglected remote communities. The only way to really close the gaps is to close those communities down and help the poor people who live in them to go where they can take advantage of the economic and educational opportunities the rest of us have. You want some real truth telling? Then let us have an audit and all the money stolen by the Aboriginal industry, where it's all gone and why it's failed to close the gaps 
Let's have some truth telling about the sexually abused children in these communities that you don't do anything about. Let's give them a future.